Yes, my name is Steve Humble. I work at Newcastle University, and I want to tell you about the research I've been doing to find slum superstars in Africa. I'm going to play a little video to start with to sort of set the scene. So I've been doing this research work with colleagues Pauline and Chris who also work at Newcastle University. Opportunity. We all know, don't we, that it doesn't matter whether you're rich or whether you're poor, but you can still be talented, can't you? Here are a few examples of some very talented individuals who've come from some very poor backgrounds, but through opportunity, they have overcome those initial difficulties and they've been successful. If you go to Africa, it's a different story. Uh, this is one of the parents with his uh, very talented daughter here that we found out in Tanzania. Um, and when we told the father, that his daughter was very talented, he was surprised. I think shocked is the word. Almost dumbfounded, Couldn't, didn't know what to say. Yeah. And so when we asked him, why? why? Why are you surprised? Your daughter's very talented. He said, only the rich can be talented. Now, his thoughts about rich and poor and where talent is situated doesn't just belong with the parents. It's also the wisdom of African officials, education officers, and people working in teaching. The lady over there on the right, Mary, was on BBC television, and she said, children from the slums, they're ignoramuses. They don't know anything. They no, have no talent whatsoever. This work that we've been doing in Tanzania stems from work that Newcastle University has been doing for over 15 years. Research teams at Newcastle have been going out to various developing countries and testing over 36,000 children. And what they found over those 15 years inspired this new research that we've been doing for the last two years because they found talented children when they were testing them, they found children that were off the scale on Western standards. If you want to read more about this, um, we've just written a handbook on international development and education. So this, uh, as well as contains other work that's been done at uh, Newcastle and also around the world on international um, education and development. Education also includes the work that I've um, been doing around uh, slum superstars. So I suppose you're thinking, how do you start to find talent? How do you set out to do that? And also, how do you change policy? Because if all these officials believe that there is no talent, how can you convince them to actually change their educational policy, to change the way they teach? So we went out to Tanzania, to Dar es Salaam. As you can see from these pictures, uh, Dar es Salaam is a, a wealthy city. It's got some lovely high-rise buildings, beautiful beaches. 
But if you go slightly off the map, if you notice here on the right-hand side of the Google map, there's lots of streets. But as you move across, the streets start to disappear off Google Maps. You're going off the map. And in Kinondoni, you come to these slum areas. And these are the sort of things you see. So you see more dirt track roads. You, may, you see more shanty sort of towns. You, there's no running water. There's very little electricity. We went to 17 schools, and we tested 2,000 children. And we used the work of Professor Renzulli. So Professor Renzulli has this idea that to have talents, you need to possess these three characteristics. You need to have schoolhouse ability. You need to have creativity. But you also need to be committed. You can think of this in terms of a football star. You know, you've got to have skills. You've got to be a bit creative. But if you don't work really hard, you're not going to be one of the best. So we used a multi-dimensional approach. Uh, we used a range of IQ tests. We used maths tests, English, Ki Swahili. We asked the children who they thought was the talented person in their class. We asked the parents who they thought. We asked the teachers. We did surveys. We did creativity tests. And we also, something very different for Africa, we asked the children what they thought about their own personal intelligence. Um, just in case you've forgotten or, or maybe not done one before, this is one of the IQ tests we use, which is the uh, Raven's IQ. Uh, the idea is you take the missing piece and you have to spot which one goes in the gap. So some at the start are, are moderately easy like this one. As you go through, they get harder. Um, I mentioned before about the, the self-intelligence. So what we're doing here is we, we, we're, we're asking children questions. And we're asking them to score on a scale, a Likard scale from 1 to 5. You know, I read a lot for pleasure and information. Is this most like me or least like me or somewhere in between? Uh, this test's never been done in Africa before with African children. And when it has been done in the West, you get Howard Gardner's groupings. So the, the groupings come in sets of three. And they follow Howard Gardner's intelligences. Uh, when we did it in Africa, we found something very different. So the groupings there are in are these four sets. So what we believe is that Africans maybe think differently about their own intelligence. I mentioned creativity at the start. And again, when we asked the teachers, um, they said their children aren't creative. But you have to remember here that there's a bit of a proviso. They're being taught in classes where it's rote learned. You know, repeat after me. Uh, they're writing, the teacher's writing on the board and they're copying that. So could these children be creative? So what we did is we used the Torrance test. For those of you who aren't too sure about the Torrance test, it's a very well-known test, been going for about 50 years. Uh, I'll just run through quickly how it works. Uh, these are examples of the children's work from Africa. This egg-shaped blob here is what you get for the first part. You get 10 minutes, and you're told to draw something as creatively as you can that no one else would have thought of in the class. The second part of the test, another 10 minutes, is you get this, these black lines, and you're asked to complete the pictures and write a story about it. You have 10 of those to do in 10 minutes. The final part of the test is you get these parallel lines. You get a set, a 30 of these parallel lines. And again, you get 10 minutes. And again, the same idea. You're asked to be as creative as you can. Some of our children were spectacular with this test. On Western standards, you know, to draw a dragon at this point is a spectacular abstraction. Um, this is usually, children usually draw a mountain range, but this child has drawn a hairline for this person. 
Over here, you've got movement, or they start with a little Z shape, but then they've got this person doing exercising. And uh, this one's quite cute, isn't it? The little feet sticking outside. Again, thinking outside the box, which is all part of creative talents. So you can collect all that data, you can score these tests, and then you can analyze these tests. And what we found is that these children in Africa were scoring the same as Western children. There was no difference. So even though they're in a rote learn class, they're still, their creativity is still exceptionally high. Uh, when we asked the teachers what they thought, they come up with some of these phrases. And the curious thing, when a teacher is, is asked about what's a talented child, they don't mention the word creativity. That doesn't come into their vocabulary. It's more about controlling the class, helping me teach them. When we asked the parents in the parent surveys, the word creativity came out a lot. They respected creativity and they saw creativity in their children, but this wasn't being seen by their teachers. So where do we go from here? The research is all about policy because if you can't change policy, you can't change what's happening on the ground. So what we hope to do next is to repeat this research in other African countries and see if our findings are still valid. I'd like to return to that word opportunity before I finish, because I think that's the key word. In the Western world, everybody, rich or poor, has opportunity. In Africa, there are slum superstars that aren't given that opportunity. Thank you.